For this lesson, we're going to talk about comparing and ordering rational numbers. So, what we have to remember is that a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction. So this includes terminating decimals, which means they come to an end. So that would be like 4 and 6 tenths would be a terminating decimal. And repeating decimals, so that would be like 5 and 3 tenths repeating. So first let's look at comparing fractions to fractions. So if I'm comparing when they're in the same unit with fractions, I'm going to find that least common denominator, that least common multiple, and write equivalent fractions. So here I've got 8 and 12. Uh, their least common multiple, I could use my multiplication chart to help me there, uh, is 24. So I'm going to rewrite these with a denominator of 24. 8 times 3 is 24, so I do the same to the top. 5 times 3 is 15. 12 times 2 is 24, so I do the same to the top. 7 times 2 is 14. Now, all I need to compare is the numerator since our denominators are the same. So 15 is greater than 14, so that means that 5 eighths is greater than 7 twelfths. Example 2. Um, this one is actually mixed numbers, not just fractions. So what's important here is that we should always be looking at the whole number part. Because yes, I could still make the common denominators, um, but I can make it a lot easier on myself if I just look at the whole numbers. Here we have 2 and 5 sixths. Here we have 3 and 3 twelfths. Well, I can actually kind of ignore the fraction part of it and just look at the whole numbers. I have 2 and 3, well 2 is less than 3, so 2 and 5 6 is going to be less than 3 and 3 twelfths. And this last one here, we're throwing in some negatives. So again, we've got two fractions, I need to find those common denominators. 3 and 6, their least common multiple is 6, so I'm going to rewrite these as fractions over 6. 3 times 2 is 6, 2 times 2 is 4, so this is negative 4 6. This one's already in 6, 6 times 1 is 6, 5 times 1 is 5. So here's where we got to be careful, we're comparing negatives. Remember that negatives work in the opposite way. So normally, if I ignored those negatives, 4 would normally be less than 5, but since we have negatives, it's actually greater than. So since negative 4 6 is greater than negative 5 6, negative 2 thirds is greater than negative 5 6. Now let's look at comparing decimals to decimals. I think this is a little bit easier, but still can be tricky. So when we're comparing decimals to decimals, we want to add zeros if necessary to the right of the last digit so that there are the same number of decimal places in each number. And then we compare the number after that decimal point. So, let's look at this first example. We've got 87 hundredths and 8 tenths. So right now this has two numbers after the decimal. We've got it in the hundredths place. This only has one in the tenths place. So we can't compare as is. We can't just say 87 is greater than 8 because they have different place value. So, I need to add a zero here so that they both have two numbers after the decimal place. Now I can compare. 87 is greater than 80. Example 5 here. Remember that this bar above here means repeating. So where right now they kind of look like they actually equal each other, we have to be careful. And remember that this bar means that it's a repeating number, so the 3 repeats. So this is technically 3 with a bunch of 3's after that. Well, let's see how many 3's I need to fill in to compare. Right now, this is 3, not with a bunch of 3's after it, actually 3 with a bunch of zeros after this. So this is really 0 0.30. Now I have enough 3's that I can compare. So this is 33 compared to 30. Well, 33 is greater than 30. So 3 repeating is greater than 3 tenths. Example 6, negative 2 and 73 hundredths and negative 2 and 734 thousandths. So again, 
First thing that I'm looking at when I see a negative sign is making sure, is it just one of the numbers at negative or are both negative? Because if it's just one, then I should be able, able to easily compare. But they both are. And I'm always going to check that whole number part to see if they're the same or different, and they are the same. So now I need to look at the decimal places. There are two numbers after the decimal here. There are three numbers after the decimal here. So I need to add a zero here. So this is going to be 7, 3, 0 compared to over here where it's 7, 3, 4. Now I have enough to compare. I can ignore the whole number part of it because they're the same. So now I'm going to look at the numbers after the decimal point. So this is 730, this is 734. Again, remember that we're talking about negatives here. So normally 730 would be less than 734, but we're talking about negatives. It works in the opposite way, so this is actually greater than. Example 7. We've got negative 1 and 4 tenths and negative 1 and 25 hundredths. So again, first thing I'm looking, are they both negative? Yep. Next thing I'm looking at, do they have the same whole number part? Yes. So now I need to look at the decimal places. There's one decimal place here, there's two here, so I need to add a zero on the number on the left. So it becomes 0 0.40, and over here is still 0.25. So again, it's negative. First, I'm going to ignore that. I'm just comparing after the decimal. We have 40 compared to 25. Well, 40 would normally be greater than 25, but we're talking about negative, so it's in the opposite way. It's actually less than. It's further to the left. It's further in the negatives. All right, number eight here, we've got negative 3 and 15 hundredths and negative 3 and 25 hundredths. So first, they are both negative. I look at the whole number part, they both have negative 3, so I just need to look at the decimals. They have the same number of decimal points, so I don't really need to rewrite it. Again, I can ignore that whole number part, and I'm going to pretend that they're not negative. 15 would normally be less than 25, but we're talking about negative, so it works in the opposite way. It's actually greater than. And the last one here. Negative 5 and 8 tenths and negative 3 and 841 thousandths. So again, I first check, are they both negative? Yes. Now I'm going to look at the whole number part. Here I have negative 5, here I have negative 3. I can actually ignore the decimal places and just compare the whole number parts. So negative 5, normally if I ignore those negatives, 5 would be greater than 3, but we're talking about negatives, which works in the opposite way, so it's actually less than. It's further into the negatives. So now let's look at the tricky part, which is comparing mixed rational numbers, decimals to fractions, fractions to percents, and so on and so forth. When we're comparing mixed rational numbers, we have to convert all the numbers to the same form. I think that it's easiest to convert everything to a decimal. Fractions can be hard to find those common denominators, so especially because we're letting you use a calculator, it should be easy to convert those decimals. So this first one, we have 3 fourths and then 7 tenths. Maybe I know that conversion in my head. That would be awesome if I did. If not, I'm going to convert this fraction to a decimal so they have the same number. So I'm going to use my calculator. I'm going to divide the numerator, 3, by the denominator, 4, and I get 75 hundredths. So here, I have 75 hundredths. On the right, I have 7 tenths. Well, they're both decimals, but this one, this one has two decimal point numbers after the decimal point. This one has one, so I'm going to add a zero. Now I can compare. 75 is greater than 70, so 3 fourths is greater than 7 tenths. Over here, we've got 5 and 2 fifths and 5 and 41 hundredths. So again, I'm going to convert to a decimal so that I can compare. I look, they have the same whole number part, so I'm just going to look at the fraction part. I can kind of ignore that part of it. So two-fifths, I'm going to convert to a decimal. I'm going to use my calculator. Two divided by five gives me four-tenths, 0 0.4. So really 5.4 and 5.41. Um, now, I'm going to look at this. This only has one decimal point. This has two. So I'm going to add a zero so they have the same amount. 
40 is less than 41, so 5 and 2 fifths is less than 5 and 41 hundredths. 2 thirds compared to 6 tenths. So again, I'm going to convert it so that that turns into a decimal. 2 divided by 3 gives me 0 0.6666666, and then there's a 7 on the end. Really, the only reason there's a 7 on the end here is it's because the calculator is rounding for you. So really what this is is a repeating decimal, 6 repeating. So if I write that here, right now they look like they are exactly the same. But again, if it's 6 repeating, this is 6 followed by another 6 and another 6 and so on. If this is just 6 tenths, this is 6 followed by 0. So I have to add that extra part to compare. Well, 66 is greater than 60, so 2 thirds is greater than 6 tenths. Negative 7 tenths and negative 7 hundredths. Um, can convert first 7 tenths to a decimal. Maybe you can do that in your head. If not, divide 7 by 10. And I get 7 tenths, point seven. And I'm comparing that to negative 0 0.077 hundredths. This has one decimal point. This has two numbers after the decimal, so I'm going to add a zero. We're talking about negatives here, so first I'm going to ignore those. Seventy would normally be greater than seven. We're talking about negatives. It works in the reverse. It's actually less than. Negative six and a half and negative six hundred fifty percent. So I've got a decimal and a percent. I'm going to convert so that they're all in the same form. For a percent to turn into a decimal, I take away that percent sign, I add a decimal point, I'm going to move it once, twice to the left. So here I've got six and a half, here I've got negative six and fifty hundredths. This has one number after the decimal point, this has two, I'm going to add a zero to compare. So. If I look at those, those are exactly the same. They actually are equal to each other. And the last one here, we've got negative 1 and 7 tenths compared to negative 7 eighths. So here's where I want to compare. First, are they both negatives? Yes. But now I want to look at the whole numbers part. This is negative 1 and 7 tenths. This is negative, well, there's no whole number part, so it's really negative 0 and 7 eighths. So since they have different whole number parts, I can kind of ignore that fraction and decimal, and I can look at just the whole number parts. Negative 1 compared to 0. Well, if those are positives, 1 would be greater than 0, but it's negatives, so it's actually less than. Now what I would like you to do is to try and order numbers 16 and 17 from least to greatest and then get that 